R.I.P. Boiling Water. You will be missed. That's right, today we're talking about vapor pressure and boiling. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Kevin Asha. I'm your host Fu and with me as always is Shu. Shu, know it. So Shu, in the last episode we talked about heating and cooling curves. And in today's episode we're going to talk about another type of curve, a vapor pressure curve. So let's get started. Vapor pressure and boiling, a lesson from the phases of matter unit. Vapor pressure, definition. Let's start with a vapor. A vapor isn't just a gas, it's a gas formed over a liquid. And there's some implication that it's occurring at room temperature. Evaporation is the formation of a vapor at the surface of a liquid. So vaporization is just the general catch-all term for liquid to gas, but evaporation is specific to it occurring at the surface of the liquid. Finally, vapor pressure. Pressure created by vapor. It's due to the particles colliding with each other, and the container falls. If you look at the two images we have of the flask, they're both stoppers, and they're both considered closed systems. If we look at the flask on the left, we have the liquid phase at the bottom of the flask, and they're trying to illustrate evaporation here. So they're showing the particles of the liquid going off into the gaseous phase. Now, one thing they don't show in both of these are the particles of air that are in that pocket above the liquid phase inside the flask. They're not showing it, so you can focus in on those particles of the liquid and the gas that are coming off of it. On the one on the right, that flask, we have liquid phase where evaporation has already occurred. You can kind of see arrows on the particles evaporating going up, and you can also see particles going back down. So we've kind of really reached this equilibrium here between the liquid and gas phase. Now, all those particles that have evaporated, those are extra particles, those are extra vapors. Now this causes that extra added vapor pressure because they're colliding with the walls of the container. Just to further illustrate vapor pressure, we've got a sample in the liquid phase. You can see those particles are kind of moving around. Remember they have vibrational translational motion. Now there's going to be some energy available for the particles to go from the liquid phase to the gas phase. And again, that's gonna occur at the surface. We call that evaporation. Now, as I start to build up a little bit of vapor above that liquid, the collision between the particles and with the container walls create what is called vapor pressure. Factors affecting vapor pressure. Any factor that increases the amount of evaporation and thus the amount of vapor increases the vapor pressure. Mo vapor, mo vapor pressure. Increased vapor pressure can be caused by increased temperature, energy provided to break particle attractions and escape the liquid phase. Taking a look at our pictures, we have two stoppered flasks. On the left, we have a low temperature, and on the right, we have a high temperature. Low temperature means the particles have a low average kinetic energy. So not as many of the particles have enough energy to enter the vapor phase. That means a low vapor pressure. In terms of the high temperature flask, there is more energy for the particles to overcome attractions and enter the vapor phase. So if I've got more vapor, I've got a higher vapor pressure. Mo vapor, mo vapor pressure. Increased vapor pressure can be caused by weak intermolecular attractions, weakly held together in the liquid phase. So if I have weak intermolecular attractions, the particles in the liquid phase are kind of loosely held together. They're not held together very strongly. So it's really easy to evaporate. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Look how easy it was to form a vapor and get a high vapor pressure. If I have strong attractions, they're really tightly held together, I don't get as much vapor because it's harder, harder to overcome those attractions. So it's like, boop, boop, boop. I don't get as much vapor pressure. Table H. Table H shows the vapor pressures of four liquids as a function of temperature. Notice that vapor pressure, which is on the y-axis, is measured in kilopascals, or KPA, and the scale goes by tens. Temperature on the x-axis is measured in degrees Celsius, and the scale goes by five. Now they don't label every single number, so you wanna be careful that you are aware that vapor pressure goes by 10, temperature by five. So it's really easy to mix that up when you're trying to read off the graph. 
All right, we're gonna take a closer look at Table H, the vapor pressure of four liquids. You ready, Fo? Let's do it. All right, great. Let's take a look at the axes first. We have on the y-axis, vapor pressure in kPa. Just to reiterate, the scale goes by 10, so be careful reading it. On the x-axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. In contrast, this axis goes by fives. So we can pick a temperature and we can note the vapor pressure of any of these liquids. Let's just kind of talk about a general trend, foo. As the temperature increases, what do you know about the vapor pressures of these four liquids? Well, they all look like they're curving up with increasing temperature, so that means as the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. Looks like a pretty direct relationship. Good. Now, it's not an exact straight line, but we definitely see that one goes up with the other. So this is consistent with what we talked about. You heat it up, there's more energy for the liquid to turn into a gas, which in turn leads to a greater vapor pressure. All right, let's kind of practice reading off of this graph. I want you to find what the vapor pressure would be at 80 degrees for ethanoic acid. All right, so you said 80 degrees, so that's on the x-axis in degrees, so I should go there first. Um, it goes up by five, so this must be 80, 85, 90, 95, and then the 100. All right, Perfect. So then 80 is right there, mm -hmm. and you said ethanoic acid? Yep. Okay, so that's right here, that line, right about there. All right, let's kind of look over to the y-axis oh, okay, and see so what that would be all the way over to here, about there. Um, and this axis, oh, goes up by tens, right? Because yep. this will be 10, 20, 30, 40, and then my 50. Um, so it looks like about 28 KPA, Good. 28 KPA. Good, so it's okay if we estimate a little when it's between grid lines. You did have a unit, that was great. So about 28 KPA, someone else might have a slightly different answer than that, and that is certainly okay. Uh, one last question. When we look at ethanoic compared to the other liquids, is it a relatively high or low vapor pressure at that temperature, let's say 80 degrees? Well, ethanoic is the lowest, right? Because if I went to 80 a little higher, I would hit water. Uh, higher so, I would hit ethanol, and then actually it's off the grid for propanol. Okay, good. So it's lower than the rest, right? That tells yep. you it has a lower vapor pressure at this set temperature. Now, what does that imply about the intermolecular attractions if it has a relatively low vapor pressure. So if the vapor pressure is low, that means that there's less vapor. Correct. Right? Okay. And if there's less vapor, but it's the same energy, that means that they must be held together stronger, which is why you wouldn't get the vapors. Very nice job. And you, you worked backwards very nicely from having a low vapor pressure towards the attractions in the original liquid. Nice job. Thanks. You try number one. Write the value of the vapor pressure for each liquid at 50 degrees Celsius. Which liquid has the weakest intermolecular attractions? Please explain why. Boiling. Let's look at some definitions. So boiling is where vaporization occurs throughout the liquid, not just at the surface. The vapor pressure will equal the external pressure. Boiling point is the temperature at which boiling occurs. Normal boiling point, the temperature at which boiling occurs at standard pressure. Now, standard pressure is one atmosphere or 101.3 kPa. Both those values can be found on table A. Looking at our picture, this nicely shows that evaporation is where liquids turn to gas only at the surface, whereas in boiling, we actually have liquid turn to gas anywhere in the liquid. And for this to be true, the vapor pressure has to equal the atmospheric pressure. All right, we have a nice set of pictures to help explain this whole idea of boiling. So just to reiterate some things, if I have on the left a situation where I have a very small vapor pressure just due to evaporation, um, and I compare that to the external pressure, which is shown by the red atom sort of pushing down, we don't have enough to overcome that external pressure. And if that's the case, boiling can occur. I am not able to turn from liquid to gas throughout the liquid. So as it says, bubbles cannot form since the vapor pressure is less than atmospheric pressure. One way I might get my liquid to boil is to start heating it up. And as I do that, I start to build up my vapor pressure. We've got a lot more vapor that's over the liquid. 
Eventually we get to a point where our vapor pressure has risen so much that it's equal to the external pressure pushing down. And once those two are, are equal, now we can have liquid turning to a gas anywhere in the liquid. And as it says, bubbles can form and rise since the vapor pressure can overcome the atmosphere pressure. All right, guys, let's talk about the man. The man is the external pressure trying to push you down. You, you've got vapor pressure, right? But you need the energy to fight back so you can build up enough vapor pressure to push back against the man. Eventually you get to a point where you're pushing back enough against the man, the external pressure, that you're free. You're free now, anywhere in the liquid, to turn into a gas. All right, let's look at some factors affecting boiling. For boiling to occur, the vapor pressure must equal the external pressure. We can increase the vapor pressure by increasing the temperature. Remember? We can lower the external pressure by using a vacuum or being at a higher altitude. This lowers the boiling point since less vapor pressure is needed. A liquid with weak intermolecular attractions, high vapor pressure, will have a low boiling point. All right, we have two people shown in our picture, one on the ground and one at the top of a mountain. The person on the ground, if you notice over to the right, experiences a higher air pressure. There's simply more air molecules at a low altitude, and if you have more air, that's gonna create a greater external pressure. Now, the person on the mountain would experience a lower air pressure simply because there's less air. So that lower amount of air creates a lower external pressure. So we would see that water actually is able to boil at a lower temperature because we don't have to add as much heat to get that lower amount of vapor pressure to equal the external pressure. Let's return to table H. One of the things we didn't mention before was the dashed line. The dashed line represents standard pressure. So where the liquid's curve crosses this line, that's where the vapor pressure equals the standard pressure. So the temperature at this point represents the normal boiling point. Okay, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into table H vapor pressure of four liquids. You ready, Fu? Let's do it. All right, let's circle that 101.3 kPa. Now, Fu, what does that represent? Uh, that is standard pressure according to table A. All right, very good. It is standard pressure. So wherever the vapor pressure equals standard pressure is where we have our normal boiling point, okay? Now, whenever we answer a question involving the normal boiling point, we will list the temperature at which that occurs. So let's do a familiar example. Let's look at water. We want to find the normal boiling point of water. So what do you think we're going to do? All right, well, we should find the line for water first, which is right here. Um, normal boiling point, as you said, is where it crosses that dashed line, standard pressure. So water in that dashed line is right about there, which is, oh, look at that. It's right at 100 degrees Celsius. Very familiar number. Exactly. Very good. So you can verify from this curve that it is 100 degrees Celsius for the normal boiling point of water. Now we noted before that we can change the external pressure at a high altitude. It's a lower external pressure. Let's pretend we're in Death Valley now. That's a very, very low point. We bet be at a higher external pressure. So let's see what a new boiling point, we can't call it the normal boiling point, but a new boiling point would be at a different external pressure. So let's say now that we're at 120 kPa and we want to know what the boiling point of water is. What would we do here, folks? So 120 is right there because that goes up by tens. Good. So going across, I hit water right about, oops, that point right there and then going down to my new pressure and right there and that looks like it's 105 degrees celsius good 105 degrees celsius so what did you notice as i increased the external pressure what happened to the boiling point boiling point went up very good so that would imply that it takes more energy to get the vapor pressure to equal that new higher external pressure that man keeping me down that's right yeah, that makes sense you try number two. Write the value of the normal boiling point for each liquid. Which liquid has the strongest intermolecular attractions? Why? Based on the normal boiling point. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode on vapor pressure and boiling. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by... Try Ben & Jerry's new toothpaste and orange juice ice cream. 
orange ice cream with minty toothpaste chunks. When mom asks, did you brush your teeth? You can say, mm -hmm. But we never off, or we zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.